Let's use VST plugins inside of Pure Data. On this channel, we didn't quite have the best solution for using reverb with Pure Data. Some of the reverb externals didn't sound the best, and ones that did sound great were quite dangerous to use. So the solution we had was to send the audio to a DAW and use VST plugins. But I want to have great sounding reverb running inside of Pure Data. And this is where VST plugin tilde object comes in. This object allows us to use VST plugins, whether it's effects or software synthesizers, inside of Pure Data. Not only can we use great sounding effects, we can control the parameters algorithmically. And we can also use our software synth of choice to play a generative melody. But let's not get too ahead of ourselves here. We need to learn how to set all of this up first. If you already have Pure Data installed on your computer, you may be tempted to skip the first step, but don't. Because the GUI of the VST will run on the same thread as the audio, there will be noise when the plugin window is open, specifically when the parameter is being changed while the audio is playing. We can avoid this by installing a special version of Pure Data that was released by the same developer of this external. We can download it from this website. And we can drag the zip folder into Applications and then unzip it. Okay, now we can open it. Go to Pure Data, Preferences, Startup, and click to turn on Enable Event Loop. By the way, don't have it on when using Jam. And now we can change parameters using the GUI without any audio dropouts. Okay, now we're ready to install the VST plugin tilde, which can be installed the usual way. Go to Help, find Externals, and search VST plugin tilde, and install. Then download the help files from this site and open this help patcher. Okay, I was a bit overwhelmed by this patcher at first as well, but we'll get through it step by step. So the first goal of this tutorial is to load up an effects plugin inside of Pure Data. Let's use Valhalla's super massive reverb because it's free to download and it sounds fantastic. You can of course use your reverb of choice instead of super massive. Okay, click on search VSD directories. This scans every VSD you have in your computer. The first run will take a bit of time, depending on how many plugins you have. Next time you scan though, it will take less than a second. After the scanning is done, click Show Plugins, then choose the plugin that you want to use. I clicked on Valhalla Supermassive. After selecting the plugin, exit out of the current window, and we see the name displayed here. Finally, click Open. Now when we click on VST plugin tilde, we should see the GUI window pop up. Success! Before we can hear it in action, let's learn how to load up plugins from scratch without using that help patcher. Okay, create a new patcher and save it as VST effects test or something along that line. So how do we load in a plugin without using all that fancy GUI that we saw in the help patcher? First, create VST plugin tilde, and then create a message object that says open-e and the name of the plugin. So in my case, it's Valhalla Supermassive. And if you forget the exact ID of a plugin, you can always use the help patcher like we did earlier or the browser patcher. By the way, we have to click search every time before we can see all of the VST names on show plugins. As a reminder, the scan will be an instant after that initial one. Okay, send that message to the VST object. And we'll quickly make a tone generator for testing. All right, click on the VST object and change some parameters. And now let's play a note and see if it's working. Awesome. Finally, we have a great sounding reverb running inside of Pure Data. By the way, if the audio is noisy while changing the parameter inside of the GUI window, restart Pure Data and try again. Okay, what's next? Let's control the parameter using Pure Data objects. First, create this message out object and attach it to the third outlet of the VST object. Then, create a message object that says param list. After connecting it to the inlet, click on it. Now we see a list of parameters that the plugin has, and we'll see why we needed to print this out in a second. Okay, create a message object that says param set zero dollar sign one. So that zero is from the mix parameter as we can see here. Next, create a slider object with 0.0, .0 to 1.0 as the range. And attach them together and connect the outlet of the message to the VST object. And now, move the slider and we can see the mix parameter in the reverb change. For the fun of it, we can connect an LFO to this. 
So we can algorithmically control professional sounding VSTs now. This will open up a lot of new doors. To review what we just did, let's control the delay time. Check out the parameter list again, and we see that the delay parameter is 3. So we need this setup right here. Okay, here's the story. After I spent hours finding the right parameter values for the reverb, I saved the pure data patcher after perfecting the sound. The next day, I opened up the patcher, ready to make the hottest ambient track you ever heard, only to realize that the setting is back to default. After crying for only an hour, give or take, I realized that I need to figure out a way to save presets. Unlike using VSTs in a DAW, the parameter values won't be saved when we save the project file. So there are two approaches to saving and loading presets, and I'll talk about the second approach later in the video. First approach is very simple and straightforward. We add a message object and a low bank object. And that's it. So for example, let's have the mix parameter saved at 100%. We need to type in 1 in the message object that is attached to the low bank object. Now when we reopen the patcher, the mix parameter will be set at 100%. And we can do this for other parameters as well. Okay, let's move on to using software synth next. We can load in the synth BSD the same way as the effects. I'm going to load in Massive. And in order to play a note, we need a message object that says MIDI note 1, 60, 80. The first number is the MIDI channel, the second is the pitch, and the third is velocity. And the note off message is MIDI note off, MIDI channel number, and the pitch. Okay, let's play a note. And we'll turn it off. We can use a delay object to determine the note length. Alright, let's talk about presets once again. The second approach is to use preset files, which is more of the conventional way. We could use the first approach for software synth as well, but typically there are tons of parameters so it might get overwhelming. And it's a lot easier to use the native GUI to sound design anyway. Also, it'll be nice to load in a preset that we made in the DAW. Alright, let's get started. Create a message object that says preset save VST demo 0. VST demo is the name of the preset file that we'll be creating. Alright, let's click on it. Now, it'll either successfully save to a designated folder or an error message will appear. So, my understanding is that VST object will think logically and automatically decide the directory path in which a preset file is saved to and loaded from. So, for Massive, it was this path that VST object wanted to save the preset file to. And because such path didn't actually exist, an error message was displayed. The actual preset folder that Massive or maybe I created many years ago was somewhere else in the computer. So, what I did is to simply create folders with the same name as shown in the path that VST object decided. As a reminder for the Mac viewers, we can go to library by opening Finder, clicking on Go, selecting Go to Folder, and typing this, and clicking Go. After creating the same path, I was able to save the preset. We can continue to click Save and it will override the parameter values. And we can click on Preset List anytime to see all the files and also the directory path. Next, let's learn how to load up a preset. To load it up, we need a message object that says Program Read with the directory path. Again, this is the same path that shows up when you click on Preset List. And we have to turn on DSP before loading up the preset. So that's what the delay object is for. Now every time we open a patcher, it should automatically load up the VST with the selected preset. And we can use this approach to load up a preset that we created in a DAW. And I can finally stop saying the word preset for the rest of this video. Now we're ready to put all of this into a generated patcher and make some music. This patcher is pretty much the same as the one from the Ambient tutorial. By the way, I included a download link in the description. One thing I'll mention is that this message object will make sure that all the notes are turned off when the sequencer is stopped.
This opened a bunch of new possibilities, and I'm excited to hear what kind of music you create with this tool. Please do share all the music that you create on social media, and make sure to tag me because I'd love to hear them. Alright, enjoy! I'll see you in the next video.